Good morning. Now that we finished with our Shakespeare, we will continue with our stories from the book called New Aster Advanced. Right? And uh, our first story will be The Shoemaker by Charles Dickens. I told you all that last time also that we'll be starting with this chapter. I hope all of you have your books with you. Those who haven't yet got their books, go to Universal and pick it up. Now, those who have the books will notice that in the contents and in the index, the shoemaker at the side of it, ICSC is written. Now why it's written? Because this chapter will also be done when you reach class 10. You might even do it in class 9 as well. Right, so it's good that we're doing it right now. Because once you do it in class 10, it will be just a revision for you. Right, so without wasting much time, we will start with the chapter, The Shoemaker. Now, all this you can read. I'll start from here. Cross-curricular connection. I'll read this portion out. Before the French Revolution, mm -hmm. France was experiencing a serious economic failure. There was dearth of food. Dearth meaning a shortage of food. The common man struggled because poor harvest and improper transportation systems made food very expensive. The upper class did not have to worry as they had a stable living. The rich stayed wealthy but majority of the French population was starving. Although the French Revolution took place later, the common man had started becoming desperate and restless and the suffering and anger eventually led to the French peasantry to revolt. Now in history you will be learning about the French Revolution or maybe the teacher teaching you history has already started it. So the French Revolution was exactly that. What, what happened was that during the French Revolution the, the common man rose against the king and the nobles. Right now the king and the nobles their class was not much as compared to the common man and the common man was suffering a lot and they couldn't take it anymore so they went against the the aristocrats the king his family and when you learn about the french revolution you'll see that how things had got so bad during that time that they literally dragged the king out from his palace and in a public place they beheaded him they cut off his head and not only did they behead him his entire family was also beheaded so that you'll be learning in history we will start with this chapter called the shoemaker now from the title of the chapter itself you get to know that the story revolves around the person who makes shoes now this person i'll just give you a little introduction to the story this person was in prison for a very long time. Before being in prison, he was a doctor. But he spent so many years in prison that he had forgotten who he was. In prison, he learned how to make shoes, how to mend shoes. Right. So even after coming out of prison, the only thing that he remembers was making shoes. Right. So that's why the name of the title, The Shoemaker. And by the time he got out of prison, he was very, very, he had turned very old, very weak, his memory had faded. So the story tells us about this only, that how we have two people who come to visit the shoemaker. And uh, they see his deplorable condition, the his state that he is in, he's turned so weak, he's turned so thin. A beard has grown. He doesn't recognize anyone, right? He doesn't like to talk to anyone. The only thing that he does was make shoes. So, read a story about an imprisoned shoemaker. Imprisoned meaning a person who was in prison. Good day, said Monsieur Defarge, looking down at the white head that bent low over the shoemaking. 
right so good day said monsieur defarge now monsieur defarge comes into this room and the person making the shoes he wishes him the time saying good day and what is monsieur you have the words also given meanings as well you can see monsieur is a title or form of address used to address a french speaking man like just like how we say namaste in the same way over there so this was the title given to a french speaking man monsieur it was raised for a moment so this person sitting over there making shoes he raises his head for a moment and a very faint voice responded to the salutation as if it were at a distance salutation is the greeting that was given right a very faint voice responded so the man responds in a very faint in a very weak manner good day you are still hard at work i see monsieur defarge says this to the shoemaker after a long silence the head was lifted for another moment so the man making shoes he lifts up his head and the voice replied yes i am working this time a pair of haggard eyes had looked at the questioner before the face had dropped again right so the the person making the shoes he looks up at defarge right and defarge sees a pair of haggard eyes now what does haggard mean again you can look down over there haggard exhausted and unwell especially from fatigue worry or suffering fatigue tiredness worried person so his eyes had that look in it as if he was very tired he was very worried about something the faintness of the voice was pitiable and dreadful pitiable comes from the word pity right so that faintness there was no the, the voice was very faint it wasn't a strong voice normally when someone wishes you good morning you wish them back good morning with that same enthusiasm right but over here the voice was very pitiable and dreadful it was not the faintness of physical weakness though confinement and hard fare no doubt had their part in it its deplorable peculiarity was that it was the faintness of solitude and disuse now he says it wasn't uh, this faintness in his voice it wasn't because he was tired right but because of solitude and disuse now because he had been left alone for so many years no one to talk to no one to speak with so that's why that faintness was there in his voice it was like the last feeble echo of a sound made long and long ago now when you now you'll all know what an echo is so when you say something then your voice resounds right that's called an echo and the last time that you would hear that same word being repeated would be a very faint like if you say hello then the hello is repeated and the last time you hear hello it will be a very faint hello it will be in the same way that's how the shoemaker responded i want said defarge who had not removed his gaze from the shoemaker he kept looking at the shoemaker so he says i want to let in a little more light here you can bear a little more right so the the room where the shoemaker was was very dingy very dark it was so he said i would like a little more light the shoemaker stopped his work looked with a vacant air of listening at the floor on one side of him then similarly at the floor on the other side of him and then upward at the speaker so when defarge says that he wants a little more light the shoemaker stops his work he looks towards the right he looks towards the left and then he looks at the speaker the half open door was opened a little further so the door was only half open so what does defarge do he opens it even more and when he opens it a broad ray of light fell into the garret now what's a garret you can see over there it's written top floor or the attic room it's a small little room so a broad ray of light fell into the garret and showed the workman with an unfurnished shoe upon his lap 
pausing in his labor. So now with the light coming into the room, Defarge could clearly see the shoemaker and he had an unfurnished, unfurnished meaning an unfinished shoe. He was still doing up the shoe. His few common tools and various scraps of leather were at his feet and on his bench. He had a white beard, raggedly cut, raggedly meaning worn out, right? So he had a white beard, but not very long, a hollow face and exceedingly bright eyes, right? So this is the description of the shoemaker, a white beard, which was raggedly cut and not very long, a hollow face and exceedingly bright eyes. His yellow rags of shirt lay upon, sorry, lay open at the throat and showed his body to be withered and worn. So he had a shirt on and the top buttons were all open, right? And that showed that his body was withered. Withered meaning it was completely wrinkled. Now he was an old man. So it was withered, it was wrinkled and worn. Worn meaning its usage was over. It didn't look like a good body. He and his old canvas frock, loose stockings and all his poor tatters of clothes had in a long seclusion from direct light and air faded down to such a dull uniformity of parchment yellow that it would have been hard to say which was which. Right Now because this man, he had confined himself to this room. He had locked himself into this room and he would barely go out ever. Right? So his clothes also had turned very dull. It had turned very faded. And the color of the clothes also had started to change and it became into a, a yellowish color. So that's why he says in the last sentence that it would have been hard to say which was which. Right? So right now Defarge couldn't even figure out ki whether it was the actual color yellow or because the clothes had faded, right? So that color had come. So what all did he have on? He had on an old canvas frock, right? Loose stockings. Now, stockings, frocks, you will normally associate them with women. But in the past, especially in France, this was how people dressed up as well. They used to wear frocks and they used to wear stockings. I'll try and get you a picture and I will show you one. Normally a lot of checked uh, colors used to be worn by the people. So it was hard to say which was which. I'll finish this paragraph and we'll stop over there for today. You can see in the picture down below also, you can see him, the old shoemaker, grey hair, grey beard, beard is not very long, you can see the shirt also, it's open, the few buttons on top are open, that look on his face, that sad look in his face, he has a shoe in his hand. So he had put up a hand between his eyes and the light. And the very bones of it seem transparent. So suddenly when the light, when Defarge, he opens the door a little more and the light comes in, the shoemaker puts up his hand between the light because it was hurting his eyes. And you could make out and he says the very bones of it seem transparent. And he's looking so lean, he was so thin that even his bones were looking transparent. So he sat with a set, steadfastly vacant gaze, pausing in his work. Right, steadfastly, you can see down below what it means, in a firm, unwavering manner, firm manner, vacant gaze. He was looking, but it didn't look as if he was paying attention also to what was happening. He never looked at the figure before him, without first looking down on this side of himself, then on that, as if he had lost the habit of associating place with sound. He never spoke without first wandering in this manner and forgetting to speak. So before looking also, first he would look towards his left, then he would look towards his right, right? Before speaking also, again he would do the same thing, look towards the left and to the right, and then he would forget what he had to say. Mr. Laurie came silently forward, leaving Lucy 
the shoemaker's daughter by the door. So now we are introduced to another character whose name is Mr. Lorry. When he had stood for a minute or two by the side of Defarge, the shoemaker looked up. Right, so the shoemaker wasn't even interested in looking up and seeing who's coming and who's going. That's why when Mr. Lorry also comes in, he stands at the side of Defarge for a minute or two. But the shoemaker showed no interest in looking up and seeing who's standing there. He showed no surprise at seeing another figure. But the unsteady fingers of one of his hands straight to his lips as he looked at it. His lips and his nails were of the same pale lead colour. And then the hand dropped to his work and he once more bent over the shoe. Right, so he looked up, he saw Mr. Lorry standing there, but it made no difference to him. Right, it did not surprise him at all that another person had walked into the room. And what does he do then towards the end? He, his hands drop to his work. Drop meaning he starts, he again continues to do his work. And he once more bent over the shoe. The look and the action had occupied but an instant. Right, so in one instant, in one moment's time, he looked up, saw the two gentlemen in front of him, right, looks down again and continues his work. You have a visitor, you see, said Monsieur Defarge. What did you say? Here is a visitor. So Defarge and Mr. Lorry had brought a visitor to meet the shoemaker. Now, who the visitor is? All those who have already read the chapter, they will know that the visitor was the shoemaker's daughter. Right, she had come to meet her father. Right, so we'll stop over here for today. Tomorrow we will continue from a visitor only. And uh, the question answers we will only do once we finish this entire chapter. For homework, all the word meanings which are given on each and every page, you will be writing it down in the copy. So you do so much work and tomorrow I shall make another video and we will continue with the explanation of this chapter. Right? Till then, finish all your writing work. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Bye.